Hello everyone, my name is Tyler and this video is about gold. So my family and I went to work on some of our gold claims in British Columbia and so hopefully we can have an adventure and recover some of that elusive flower gold at the same time. I apologize in advance for the shaky camera work in the first couple scenes. This is the first video project I've done since the sixth grade so bear with me. I hope you enjoy the treasure hunt. After a scenic drive through the mountains, we arrive at our home base in the Caribou region in British Columbia. We quickly set up camp, which was easy this year since we finally have a decent trailer. After years of roughing it, we have finally begun to prospect in comfort. As soon as we arrive, I immediately begin to haul our gear down to the work site. Step one, once arriving on a site like this is always the same. You do some panning and exploration, if only to reconfirm what's there and see if anything's changed from year to year. This is definitely important when we're working river deposits because the stream gravels change with each new deposition and so you want to be aware of that before you start. And luckily our first pans were excellent. It's difficult to see in this picture but there are probably at least 500 to 1000 specks of gold in this pan. Some are just on the verge of being visible with the naked eye. The vast majority is microfine gold, so it's a bit deceptive, although some of the flakes are a bit more substantial. Obviously, it takes a huge number of these nearly microscopic specks to equal even a small flake of gold. Lots of places would mine 20 colors, but if you mine 20 specks, you'd probably go broke. But even the small stuff adds up eventually, as we'll hopefully show here. It took several hard seasons to finally get everything to come together and find a spot that's actually worth it to mine, so that's good. Right, so we've been here for a couple hours now and we've isolated a pay streak of gold. Each of these holes, test pans, have at least 200 specks of gold. And uh, starting to fill some pre-buckets here and we'll probably set up somewhere over on this side somewhere here. There's a little bit of vegetation stuff we'll just leave alone, work around, set up. Pretty cool. You can see an average pan of material here from this area. Just a couple little spots. And it's very hard to see, but there is probably at least 200 specks of gold in here and spread all throughout the black sand. So. This entire area should be economic. And if you look here, we've done a nice pay line here, test this out, and everything looks good. Time to set up and produce. My father and lifelong adventure companion set up the sluice and I filled up some five gallon buckets with uh, some close gravels that, so that we could do some initial tests on our new equipment, just so we can make sure that everything's working well and all optimized before we run the better ground. All right, day one finished. Got the full pay streak outlined. 200 specks of gold in each spot. And I pre-packed a bunch of uh, pails here. And yes, it is hard work to everyone. And our quick little look at our setup there in the glowing night. And the beautiful look of the river. I'm just happy to be this far ahead and be here. It's just gorgeous. And on the gold, a new Canadian gold rush right here. So we just need to set up our pump, attach it to the sluice system here we got. We dug out the bottom of this. We checked our old tailings areas, which was kind of like right here-ish. And you can tell oh, this is fresh material. It has more than a couple specks that we left last year. And then we dug this out so we should have a little bit of area to flow and find tailings out here. And then coarse tailings out the back. We also condemned right behind these buckets. Did a couple test pans there. There's very little gold. So we'll just pile this stuff back and then work our sluice back gradually. This is my dad's new design called the Answer. It has a hopper with a holding claw and then you can direct shovel into the hopper or use five gallon pails to dump inside it. 
As the material is washed, any material bigger than a quarter inch slides off the plate and then rolls into the coarse tailings pile. All the gold-rich gravels then drop into the main sluice tray and then wash into the V-matting before going on to, into the Devon Gold Vortex Drop Riffle VDR matting, which is the primary recovery vehicle of the sluice. The vast majority of the take will be in this one mat, concentrated in the top eight or so inches. Beyond the VDR mats, we have some passive matting from a gold hog, and we throw an extra river sluice at the end as an extra check. The main efficiency gains are coming from the hopper and the Devon Gold VDR mats. The Vortex mats are actually pretty amazing, frequently recovering less than 1,000 mesh gold, and there's rarely even a single speck in the tailing, so that's remarkable. The secret is really these VDR mats. There's similar stuff out there that works you know, comparably good, but these wells for fine gold appear to get, you know, well over 99% recovery. So it's very rare that you get more than a tiny micro dot little flower speck out the back. Of course, we do have a longer sluice, more area to run, the better, of course, but I think we've definitely moved up in tiers of gear. Over the past few years, we started with a very small little sluice and worked our way up. And we added this keen river sluice that you're not allowed to use in BC, but we just added it to the end here so it's not stuck in the river and all legal and nice. Uh, but I'll pop another video here once we get all this set up and running. I found a nice little spot here to set up the pump in British Columbia. You have to have a fish screen, that's what this is onto the intake of the pump so that no tiny little minnows or an egg or not even the smallest little bug gets harmed. And then we have a just a very small low horsepower little Honda pump here. And it completes the ensemble. In British Columbia you have to use uh, one and a half inch intake or less. And this is a little baby pump will run for well, probably almost all day for maybe one little fill up. So very efficient, very low cost operation. It's just mostly labor. All right, so we've done about an hour and a half of production here. And we can just already tell that's probably twice, at least twice as efficient as our other setup before because we just have this new hopper that my dad designed to just direct shovel into it. Ideally too you can just work and shovel right into the top of the hopper. And just to give you a more close up of this, it has a little kind of boiler box, little grizzly thing there. Water flow, I'll show you this in operation too after of course, but you just see shovel there, drops in, goes down the plate falls down, raw material, and it drops down into the, the V-mat with a little uh, mud flap kind of thing to keep everything flowing nice. Direct into the VDR mats. Probably the most expensive and difficult thing to make on this entire thing, is you just buy it. It's actually made by a guy in Alberta, you can just Google it. And I've seen people make them out of aluminum and there's other similar kind of things that people have. Uh, but this is, we've tried probably 20 or 30 different things and this is definitely the best we've come up with. And then kind of the more ex normal standard gold hog matting, I think where that's mostly ripped from. And then drops down to the expanded metal. And there's also little areas of miners, moss and different things as well, standard carpet. We've got kind of the whole mix. But the vast majority of the production will go in these wells. I'd say probably at least 90% of the gold will be just in these little... Oh, you can actually see a bunch of gold in there. It's actually more... It's actually gold throughout all this. I sound surprised, but we didn't run that much material, and it just seems so fast, because we're just... This is probably a day's worth of production that we used to do, is now done in an hour and a half before lunch, so it's just amazing. And it's not perfect, like we did, uh, we probably lost, 
I don't know, a piece of a 1% of recovery here because we did just tech check the end of the sluice here. And last year there wasn't a speck in this overflow sluice, but this year after just banging a bunch of pails through there, we did find a little bit of gold in here, but it's negligible. It's definitely, I don't know, 40 colors or something. It looks like just a few cents worth of gold. So if we're double tripling our production and we're only getting you know, 1% kind of loss in recovery, that's definitely an equation I think any miner would be happy with. And we will check our tailings and a couple other things here too, but I doubt it'll be too much to care about. And I guess I'll see you guys a little bit in a bit here. The next day we encountered bear tracks near the water. And during lunch, we discovered the owners. Or rather, they walked in on us. Well, I haven't actually ever seen a brown bear in, in a while. Yeah, it's kind of weird. Brown. And really, really small black guy. Look at that little tiny guy. And I don't know if you can hear in the background of it, but they're just saying the other guy... It owns this property is saying that these two bears are both weaned, although they look very small. One of them was acting pretty oddly and was just strolling around like Paddington. Mama has appeared. Well, what do you mean? It is if you ran across a field and grabbed that little brown bear. Yeah, don't don't abduct these bears. The mama will attack. There's the mummy. Yeah, follow together. The big family. Yeah, they walk like they own the world. Just coming to invade the camp. And gold recovery in progress with two seasoned operators. Definitely some gold in there. It looks the distribution definitely looks different with the hopper dropping down than last year, where we kind of classified things down first and then just sort of fed into the sluice. But there is gold, I think, in nearly every single row. Clean out, just brush up the mat, sprayer off the hose intake, take the new uh, concentrates, and I'll show you what we do. This is essentially a miniature version of the bigger sluice with the same vortex drop riffle VDR matting. And just a trickle, smaller version, a self contained, flows in, you can't lose anything. And full of gold. That looks like. And uh, gram at least right there. And then we pan out the concentrates. And this is the second part of our pan out. See, it looks really good actually. There's gold in every single cell. So the little gold wells, they make like a strange vortex and fill up and kind of discharge the black sand. Down 
and I'll show you what it pans up to here in a second. You can start to see the gold emerge here. It actually doesn't look too bad considering this is only probably an hour and 15 minutes of work. And it's looking like it's pulling up to a nice grammar there. And just if you just back pan very slow, use gold's extra specific gravity because it's so much heavier than all the others, hopefully similarly sized material that we classify down just on a simple uh, 20 mesh there screen over a bucket concentrates down and then just gradually go and I throw my finger in there and grab those little specks and throw them up. Some people just never put a finger in the pan and get mad but whatever. So you get every speck and do it quick. Hilariously we discovered using a cast iron pan was a really bad idea. It covered our nearly perfectly clean gold with black iron filings when we brushed out the pan so it actually put it back a step where it was filled with black iron sands again right after we purged it of all of them. Alright so yesterday was mainly calibration we ran probably I think 30 some low 30s of just raw pails but it's not concentrated that's what we were doing last year with the classifier on top spray and now we're on to finally the highest grade stuff we got path cleared nice easy walkway through what we did yesterday everything's safe and good to go and every single one of these pans is, a, is well over 200 colors each and the stuff we're working back towards there really dropped off it was more like 20 30 colors and that contributed to the low take from last night but we didn't work very long and today we should be able to give her through lots of the high grade stuff and get a pretty good hourly rate i think and it's just a little spot here it's very unassuming but it's just loaded with gold Alright, I'm going to take a pan here from the center of our trench, and you can see it's about six inches down. That's about the lake there uh, in this area. Things are deposited in pay streaks, so things change very rapidly. And you have to keep doing periodic test pans. We did some in previous years over here where just we thought we were rich and jumping up and down. And then it was just the top two inches that were super enriched and then it drops off to almost nothing below it. So that works if you can do a huge strip mine kind of thing over there, but for this kind of stuff, we've never been into this particular pay streak up here, so got to keep testing it. And it'll either get probably much better or much worse, and we'll have to see. It got much worse. Let's see, second run. And hopefully there's more gold underneath. Alright, so you can see here I'm breaking up this top few inches of this clay. And you can see, or hopefully you can see there's like a clay layer with a fine de deposition of sand on top. And then underneath there's gravel and cobble up to fairly substantial big rocks but uh, this is the richest stuff and this acts the clay is a, acts as a false bedrock and you can see the river and this is just a mouth into an off channel here forms up into an island flows up top here and this is the low pressure zone this entire thing all right so here is a prime example of why you have to wash your rocks i was just sitting here doing a pan test pan at the bottom of our pit and I looked forward at this rock and I was like is that visible gold holy moly and I pulled this out and if you look closely you can see there is one speck of gold there and a bunch of little specks of gold scattered throughout this entire this is like really gooey really gooey unpleasant material but you can see the little specks of visible gold it's actually pretty amazing I was just right out of the river like that so this is the natural deposition and how these rocks catch the gold and so this is why these very slimy clay rocks you have to wash them otherwise you're guaranteed going to miss gold so when your tailings come out the other end the rocks should just be gleaming shiny and perfectly clean otherwise you will lose gold and some of those flakes were pretty large
But still, I think that's pretty amazing to just pull it right out of the river like that. I've never, never seen that exactly like that before. I found visible gold little specks, but... And I didn't even check the other sides of the rock. And I imagine there's more gold hidden underneath all this goo. And this material is stuck on there. Some of it's very slimy, but it's just, it's the stuff that gets put on the last layer, uh, all the light material where this stuff drops off in the river and then encrusts it with a very light, sandy, fine material, the clay. All right, so I just did a very generous pan from our tailings. And you'll be able to see, yes, folks, that is just a count of one, one speck and a huge, huge heap and pan. And that's in our fine tailings that's going up the back of our sluice box there. So the system is definitely working. That's as, about as good as it can get, considering we're double, triple, probably triple production throughput going through the sluice, so. We appear to be getting high 99% recovery, but you can only mine and recover, you know, gold that's in the dirt, so. At this point, if we don't get anything, that's because uh, the dirt does not pay. Yep, gold all down into the V mat. All the way down, pretty much every single side. Get the positive there. This is just the first part of the cleanup, part one, part two. And as after letting it run for a little bit, as you can see each of these wells makes the most of the vortex. Runs up with gold and you sell less and less. But there's, that looks pretty good. For just half a clean out, that's probably what? How long did this take? An hour? An hour and a half? An hour and a half. Is this this afternoon? No, this All is the morning. Part this one. is the morning one. So you can see the gold start to get revealed here. It actually looks pretty good, considering we didn't run very much. There's at least a couple of grams there, if not more. It looks really rich, especially when you can see the gold to black sand ratio is about 50% there. Looks very good. And this is just the morning. And there's the second part. Here's a few pictures with a cork for scale, just so you can get kind of an impression of just how small some of these tiny gold particles are. What's your guess? Two and a half? Three grams? 2.75. And there's the first a little bit of hard work. So we were a bit disappointed with the gold count yesterday, but tried to take some new test pans and they look really good. This is just, every pan is like this. And you can also see there's bigger Flakes as well on the bottom. So here's day three on the gold. It actually looks really good. Look at these top cells. 
some of them are probably 40, 30 percent full. And of course most of it's caught in the mat. First few cells. So that'll focus. Nice river of gold. This should add up to something hmm. more impressive than the last couple of ones. So I wanted to talk a little bit about the kind of ground people will work. So you can see over in this area, there's very large rocks. And I've been out here working this and just hitting it with a pick as hard as I can. And in some of these rocks, it just ricochets back. And it's like hitting a wall of steel or concrete. The gold's really good, but... You know, you have to weigh that against versus the stuff way over here, which is really close to our sluice setup and is medium grade, but it's just like shoveling. You know, I'll grab a shovel here just to show how easy this is. Just easy and you can get full shovels like that every single time it's just mostly gravel because over here the rock ratio is much higher where it's heavy rock so even though the gold may be a third or less it may still be more economic because we ran an hour we ran almost as much as we did yesterday and I still have strength left and like yesterday I basically had to have a nap it's definitely a lot of hard work shoveling gravel out here, but gold makes people do very strange things. It's full of gold that's either shovel, can't mine that. Yeah, those wells are definitely pretty full. And how much do you think each one holds? Two, three grams each? If well, they're full? They're definitely over a gram in each one. All right, prospecting pro tip here. If you're out on the river prospecting, you're probably gonna be panning for lots of gold, so set up yourself a little gold panning station. A really handy thing to have is a milk carton. You carry your gear in it, and it functions as a portable stool. You just find a nice little spot here in the river where the water's a little bit, sh a little bit deeper. And then you got some shallow parts on the side that you can build up into some footstools to kind of embrace your, your feet on. And this way you can pan in comfort, which is a big deal because if you do this properly and have a big claim like we do, you're going to have to do hundreds and hundreds, if not thousands and thousands of test pans. So set up a bunch of these little spots and easy to reclaim at the end, just kick the rocks in and uh, shovel out the center with a little spade if you have one. You can always just toss the rocks by hand, it's really easy. And will save you a lot of time because you have to be comfortable to pan out a lot, otherwise your back will be screwed. So save your back and find some more gold. If anybody makes this plaster mining stuff look easy, they're probably lying. It is a lot of hard work. And just to demonstrate just kind of roughly how hard of work it is, when I'm out here, I generally lose at least a pound per day, at least. Usually it's more like a pound and a half. And that's with feasting every day and you're just lots of calories, huge calorie intake, and yet you're still running such a big deficit. And how is that possible? It's because you're shoveling gravel all day. Very hard work. All right, so I finally found some good gold. I'd just like to explain what drew me to this area. If you look here, the river takes a bend, and this entire area here is a gravel bar left over in a low pressure zone in a high flood time. And if you look at this tree, this huge driftwood tree thing, look at this. Look at how big this is. And we are significantly higher than the water level here. Probably almost a meter here. 
You look at that from the water level up to this tree. And then so if you imagine how much flow is necessary to move this huge tree, it's just astronomical. Like you need some huge, huge water flow to be able to move this and then deposit this in the low pressure zone on the side of this island thing here. And if you look at these large rocks as well, these are even beyond cobbles. We're up into big boulders, heavy ironstone. This stuff is just unreal, the amount of force necessary to move all this stuff. These are the heaviest, some of the heaviest rocks in this river. Barring once you get down to bedrock and the way bigger stuff there. But a prospecting tip is I saw this, and you look, and it points. And this is directly pointing in the direction of the water flow like this. And so then just off to the side, like obviously this is dropped off in the low pressure zone here, but that means all this entire area here is probably excellent for prospecting for gold. Heavy ironstone, black stuff, and sure enough, I dug a very small little sample here. It's very hard digging, but I already snuffered up the gold sadly, but I'll probably take a picture here in a second show you what it's like, because it's pretty significant, especially right on the surface. So I'm on the track of the gold balls. I think it was somewhere right in this vicinity here where I was picking them up, maybe another to 20, 30 meters back there. And this general kind of fan that this entire low pressure zone takes, as you can see, kind of going in this big, nice fan here of this darkened material. So this is just a quick guess here, just like our other deposit on the little offshoot mouth there that goes around this island. This will point, in theory, directly along, point along the pay streak. So you can use it as a prospecting aid. We pan big here. One thing some viewers may notice about these rocks is that most of them are very dark and they are in fact very heavy and often they break apart into a bunch of rusted looking kind of stuff. So this stuff is very heavy and because it's all washed clean, this is the stuff that only gets deposited on a very high flood or very early in the year that once every decade flood or 100 year flood that comes through here and then deposits all this very heavy iron rich material up here. And even stuff like this. Very, very heavy. And this is where the golden balls are allegedly deposited. But this material has been here for a long time it looks like. Then we finally get into the really good gold and then it rains non-stop for a day straight and then another day and another day and so on all right so i just want to show everyone what i woke up to everything is completely flooded the water level is up probably half a meter in the past uh day and a half so we've been completely flooded out Luckily, we managed to complete some workings and reclamation stuff, but you can see it's all the stuff that was nice, good legal ground is now underwater just because of nature. We walked all the way down there just, uh, yesterday, the day before. Yikes. And this basin here in front of this beaver dam looking thing, that's like, I don't know, five, six feet deep almost too in its center. It really just whips through here and this is why this kind of stuff replenishes every year because look at this this is a low water in the fall in the late fall and it can still rise this rapidly and come through here and this moves a lot of material this is pretty crazy there's nature's wrath and i guess the gold gods say no more gold for us this year we'll have to come back uh, later in the fall or spring that's just the way the cookie crumbles sometimes. See the giant flake of gold floating? 
and that's a pretty dang big piece of gold. Alright, hopefully I rig this in a slightly non awesome way. I can demonstrate more fully what I'm doing here. I'm just trying to keep this middle field clean. Get your finger in there. Try to get the oil off your fingers, of course. And you just gradually pan. You tap, all the gold will climb up to the ledge, form a nice ridge. And you just gradually pull, use the water pr pressure, pull each little black stone back. And if you keep the field of view, view the center part clean, you'll be able to spot and stop any migrators and get close to 100% recovery, even with no equipment. All you need is a gold pan. There isn't really much to it, it's just kind of a feel, back and forth. Normally I'd be more aggressive, but this is right at the end here. You can see, just find the water level where you're comfortable. And then this should, at the bottom here, form a natural sort of whale tail formation. But it's really easy to do once you have two hands and you can just rock back and forth. Gradually pull, just, you have surprising control. You can grab every little molecule of sand. And this is just classified down to uh, tw less than 20 mesh, so. Very easy. And if you wanted this to be even easier, you just classify it down to the different levels and do those pans individually. But this is just huge bucket of concentrate into the mini sluice, and this is just panning that. One pass through the mini sluice. We did uh, double check its tailings and there was some gold, but definitely not very much. Definitely get high 90% recovery going through there. And you can see a nice <clears throat> big pile of gold there emerging. Then you can smooth this foreground out here. I've noticed a few other people doing this and they say I do it backwards where you should be grabbing the gold and trying to, I don't know, mentally mind, uh, tele use telekinesis to get the gold for yourself. But I think it makes sense this way. Get rid of that black sand. Be the natural human magnet. Come, become one with the waves and the gold. Let's see once this is spread out and tapped. And then once you can tap it there. Grab any stragglers, pull them up. And when you tap, of course, because the gold is so much heavier than the black sand, which is mostly hematite and magnetite. It'll sink to the bottom and you can just easily grab all these nice little particles. And even though they're all mismatched, like I said, because this is just classified down to less than 20 mesh, this is a lot more difficult than it should be, but you can see how easy it is. And once you get into a nice groove, you can do it. Pretty nice heaping pan of concentrate in you know, 15 20 minutes, probably. And it's just beautiful to watch that gold emerge at the end. And at this point, you can also start to estimate like, how much gold you're getting. If you can put it into nice little piles like that, that's a good sign because then you can say, you know, that's a gram, there's a gram, kind of thing. So. We're looking at least probably two grams plus for this cleanout, which is very good. So we just worked a bunch of the remaining high bench gravel that was really close there. Since it's been raining a lot, so a lot of our workings got soaked there. So this is what we we're working, the crappy ground at the end. And maybe the crappy ground is not so crappy.
because it's pretty good when you go out here for an hour or two and you can pull up multiple grams. There's definitely people that work all day prospecting and metal detecting and stuff and they don't come home with more than a gram or two. And that's an entire day. And again, you can just smear up here. And I know a lot, it's kind of a controversial thing to use uh, your finger in a gold pan. I've seen people, you know, if you walked up to someone and just put your big sausage finger right after eating, some, eating a big hot dog over the fire and just put that into someone's gold pan, that's not a good thing to do. Most people probably slap your hand away and wonder what the heck is wrong with you. But that's for good reason, because this gold is so fine, it'll definitely float. It just goes onto the meniscus of the water and just kind of chills there. And you can see the nice whale tail formation there in the bottom. That's just a natural consequence of this weird, slightly rocking motion. It's nice and controlled back and forth. Just you're only grabbing the nice light hematite and magnetite off there. And what's the difference you ask? One is magnetic and one is not magnetic. They're both iron minerals. And this is looking pretty good. See the nice little pile of grams up there? Only there was way more of this dirt. We've worked about most most of the ground that's there. And this gold is looking pretty clean. Got some intruders down here. Yeah, I think it's totally fine to use your finger because otherwise it would be very hard to get in the high 90%. And you're not missing much if you have to just run your concentrates through again or whatever. I wouldn't go too overboard with this. We used to spend hours just picking out every little molecule and flower gold speck, and that's just not an economic use of your time. You want to get good equipment, good processes, get really good at this back pan stuff, and should be able to save a lot of time. And this is going much slower because I'm still trying to adjust this camera and get comfortable, but you can see it doesn't take much time at all and the beautiful nice piles of gold emerge from the black sand. Tapping is your friend. Lots of tapping. Tap, tap, tap. And you can see all these guys climb up here. But look at that nice big pile there. It's definitely looking pretty good. If only we had the actual stamina to be out here and shovel all day for 12 hours straight, we'd be able to get a lot of gold. But it's just not, not feasible. And we've already been out here a week now, so we're super tired. You can definitely tell the footfalls are heavy. So it's good to end on a nice note here where you don't have to work too hard, work some close, high bench gravels and still get some decent gold. And you'll notice a lot of these flakes are actually like some of the largest gold we've recovered out of there. The first couple of days were a little bit light on the gold, the actual like weigh-in, even though the spec count was very high. You can say here is 400 colors, but they're very, very, very small. If you have 25 decent sized colors, that's good. Anything above that is generally a nice, nice bit of ground to work. And of course, if you're machine mining, you can even mine lower grades because you have efficiencies of scale. Okay, so that's about it. You can see the last little bit of gold here emerge, and then you just snuff it up. And the last time I snuffled, snuffled it up, snuffled it up, from uh, Pioneer Polly's videos, the one guy that's what he was saying, the snuffle bottle. It sounds really funny, so I'm trying to adopt that. But uh, I was trying to suck up the gold, and there's just so much gold that it clogs the snuffer bottle, or snuffle bottle, if you prefer, like the snuffle up, I guess. But you can see that's how back panning is done. It's very simple. Don't need much equipment, except the gold pan and a bit of time. And uh, I think that's it, except for the one bonus tip is, of course, throw a little bit of jet dry. 
The Jet Dry Company loves us placer miners because for some reason that became the standard, even though you can use soap or just soap or whatever you want. You want to have your fingers clean, not oily, obviously, so you can do this without you're putting your finger around in here and the gold is floating. You need to wash your hands and uh, put some soap of some kind into your pan. And not very much because you don't want it to sud, so you still want to be able to see. And I'd say that's a nice little pile of gold for her. Probably two hours of work. All total, we did pretty good. We found a lot of gold and had fun. Gold prices are now high enough in Canadian dollars that there are numerous fine gold deposits that can be economically exploited and can be extracted by hobbyists. There's a lot of really low-grade land out there. When no one really wants to shovel gravel for a few bucks an hour, but that's rapidly changing. And you can learn a lot of the skills for free on YouTube. When we finally arrived back home in Alberta, we discovered we had stowaways. Check out this weird spider. It should be easy to identify, but I couldn't figure out what the heck it was. It almost looks like it has red rimmed eyes and kind of a beak thing over a grinning mouth of blocky teeth. If someone turned that into a Halloween mask, it would probably be pretty horrifying. My dad found another one of these of the same species, so he released them together into the forest so they could, I don't know, be friends or maybe create more horrible face spider progeny. And on that lovely note of potential spider romance, that's the end of this adventure. Thanks for watching.